Okay, welcome to a new episode of Trip Tees. I am Leah Vincent. I am coming to you from Sandals Duns River. This is actually the newest sandals in Jamaica, but I'm going to put that in quotes because Sandals Duns River was actually a resort. It was the very first sandals I ever visited back in like 2005, and then it closed, and then they completely gutted it. I mean, I don't know what other word to use besides gut is because it does not look the same at all. And it's actually beautiful. And I would say that I'm like the biggest critic ever. So take my recommendation. <laughs> um, the beach is beautiful. It's bigger. I remember when I came here in 2005, the beach was really shallow and the beach is really deep now. Um, it's very swimmable. Actually, they have a lot of really neat water sports. And I think because of the way it positions itself, um, it's kind of a bay, kind of not a bay, but it's it's not like open ocean with waves or anything. Um, I can see where the waves are breaking out a little bit further out. So they were actually even doing water skiing yesterday. And I would like to say in full disclosure, I went and signed up for water skiing and I didn't get up. I was terrible at it. But um, I was with Becky, who's been on our a guest on our podcast before, and she is here with me and she got up. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You know, like it was my dream and it didn't happen. But she was water skiing down the coast of Ocho Rios in Jamaica um, in the ocean. I just think that's so cool. They have a lot of other water sports here too. The Hobie Cats, which are the little sailboats. And if you know how to sail, they'll let you take them out by yourself. But if you don't know, they'll, have, they'll send someone out there with you. Um, and they have little kayaks and paddle boards. And that is actually something that is really neat with sandals. It's all included. Um, you don't have to pay any extra. I, I really enjoy that kind of experience where you don't feel nickel and dimed because sometimes you're like, oh, um, I would like to try that. Oh, it's 80 bucks. Well, what if I don't like it? And it's, you know, I'm done with it in five minutes. That would be a waste. So to me, these kind of vacations are nice because you're able to just like try something new. Let's let's try that. Oh, I've never heard of a spicy margarita. I don't know if I'll like it. Well, it's all included. So let's just try it. Um, I think that's like a a big benefit of all inclusive. Um, so far, the food has been really good. I would say like we did do the Greek place and I was kind of like, I wasn't that great. But last night we did Zuka or Zucca. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It was like Latin food. And it was so good. They had a surf and turf. And that's one of the other cool things about sandals is if lobster is in season. So there are certain times of the year that lobster is not in season for them to catch um, locally. That seems very repetitive. But um, if lobster is in season, um, it's included. So I got the surf and turf last night and I am a little bit of a cat fan. I mean, when I say a little bit, I mean, I'm a, like a fanatical, ridiculous person. I have two at home and there is a litter of kittens here. They look like they're about nine or 10 weeks old. And I can say that because I know cats. My first word as a child was kitty. So I'm just trying to validate my, I love cats. Anyways, so I definitely put my lobster tail in my purse and brought it to the kittens and had a great night um, with me and my friends here at Sandals Tons River. But besides the kittens, they do have a lot of entertainment. They had a great piano bar with two amazing singers last night. I was, I was so impressed. And then they have, um, like different like musical stuff at night. It's not gonna be your like wild party hotel at all. They do have something called the Rum Club or Rum Lounge, I forget what it's called, Rum something like that. Um, and it's like kind of like a sports bar type atmosphere and they have a DJ at night. But one thing that I think is really neat, and this is something that is true with a lot of the sandals, like Sandals Montego Bay and Sandals Royal Caribbean are like that, that's also here in Jamaica. And then the ones in St. Lucia are like this, where they have a stay at one, play at more than one. So there's a bus that leaves at 6.30 in the evenings and you can go to Sandals Ochi, which is in, also in Ocho Rios. That one is the more lively sandals if you want more nightlife. They have something called uh, the rabbit hole, which is a speakeasy. You have to get the password each time. I've been there before. And um, it's a really fun like 1920s like real traditional speakeasy. I think it was the first one in the Caribbean. And um, we're going to actually go try that tonight because the agents that I'm with have never been to Sandals Ochi. But I think that's a big benefit when you're staying here. So this one, I would say, is going to be a more premium sandals. Um, everything's new, the, you know, the decor, the service has actually been amazing. And I'm like looking for something to complain about. I mean, that is... <laughs> That is my personality on vacation because I'm not really on vacation. I'm working the whole time. So I'm always like, what will somebody complain about? Let me look for it. And honestly, I can't even think of something right now because I don't have anything to complain about besides my view. And I would like to make a point. I've got the curtains closed, but I have a view of the parking lot. So I do not always get the most amazing views when I travel. 
I am going to move to another resort after this one. And I'm, um, have really high expectations <laughs> of my view. And, um, so follow, make sure you follow me on social media. I'm going to be doing a lot of promotions. I'm going to be there posted to do social media for them, um, for the end of this week. But here at Sandalstones River, I think this is definitely going to be kind of like the jewel of uh, the island. I mean, this is the one to come to. I do love Sandals Montego Bay as well. But this one, I'm super impressed with the renovations and they did a great job. And I think they've probably recruited some of their best staff to be here at Sandalstones River. And I sat down with Spencer. He was my business development manager with Sandals and Beaches Resorts. And he's also an ex Club Med employee. So I think he's going to have some good stories. He's currently working at a country club in Florida, and I'm excited to talk to him. Welcome, Spencer. Hey, thank you, Leah. Yeah. And so <laughs> just to just to be clear, I'm a I'm an ex unique vacations employee. Oh, there you go. Slightly <laughs> different. Uh, but, you know, I did. I never worked on resort for sandals and beaches okay, okay. Um, as opposed to where I, I was on resort for Club Med. Or Club Med. Okay, so there is a difference. I didn't even think about that. So um, what are you doing now? And then how long has it been since you've been um, in travel? Yeah, absolutely. So currently, I am the membership sales and experience director at mm -hmm. um, Queens Harbor Yacht and Country Club in, in Jacksonville, Florida. So moved back home after after we had our son in 2020. And, you know, started started working in membership at a golf and country club. How long were you in travel before that? So I started working for Club Med almost right after college. So I graduated from the University of Florida in 2013. And that's when I got a phone call from one of my best friends, uh, aunt, who worked at Club Med. And okay. she said, hey, we think you would be a really, really good fit for this. You have the right sort of personality. You studied French in college and it's a French company. So we think this would be an awesome opportunity, even if you just intern during the summer to kind of get a mm -hmm. sense of it. And if you want to continue, awesome. If not, you know, you have your PR degree from Florida that you can fall back on. So I started in okay. September of 2014 working at Club Med Sandpiper Bay down in Port St. Lucie, Florida, and had no clue what to expect, but <laughs> went down there and I worked with Club Med and traveled all over the world with them uh, until 2018 and then started into uh, Unique Vacations and moved out to Oklahoma where I met you lovely people and, and worked with them for about two years. So tell me what islands did you work at for Club Med? So for Club Med, like I said, started off in Florida, not an island, but, you know, mm -hmm. very different too. After that, I worked two seasons there, which are six month stints. So you get a six month okay. contract sure. and they move yeah. you around. So mm -hmm. I did a couple, two seasons in, in Sandpiper and I was at, at Club Med Cancun. Oh. And then after mm -hmm. that, I had a season in Indonesia at uh, Club Med Binten Island, which was phenomenal. I have some funny stories about that one. That was a uh, culture shock to say the least. Okay. It was very, very different. But then after that, I came back, went back to Sandpiper and then was in Columbus Isle in the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos. Wow, you almost did like a around the world. <laughs> Tour. Yeah. And in between, um, you know, the, the best part about, you know, very similar to, to sandals, but the best part about being with Club Med is also anytime you do a training, they just send you off to another resort. So, you know, oh, we're going to get everybody together and we're going to go to Punta Cana or uh, we're going to do a big training with everyone in the entire company and we're going to fly you out to uh, Valmorel and the French Alps or you're going to go to Malaysia and, and to Sheraton Beach and spend five days there doing a, a training, learning how to be more uh, effective as a sports manager or something like that. So <laughs> this might be a recruiting uh, a podcast to work for Club Med. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Ooh, yes. sounds amazing. <laughs> well, to, to your point there, I, I normally tell people in a world where everyone is kind of glued to their phones or, or to this or that club med kind of rids you 
of all of that. The expectation of a GO, um, which is what they call their their employees, it's it's a French acronym, which is gentil organisateur, and it just means a gracious host in French. It's one of those things where you're expected to be around the guests at all times. So you have lunch with them, you have dinner with them, you greet them at the bar, you're in the shows, and then you do your sun dances and your crazy signs afterwards to try and get everybody, you know, involved. What's a crazy sign? So a crazy sign, it's an organized dance. It would be like the YMCA. You know, everybody okay. does the, the hand motions all together, but they've gotten a little bit more hip. So, you know, you find a song that you like, uh, <laughs> Pitbull's Fireball. It, name a song, uh-huh. and I'm sure there is a crazy sign to it, but it's a way to essentially, you know, you get your team up on stage, you're dancing along to these very easy dances and you're encouraging all of the guests to get out there and dance with you. And it's that just that sort of buy-in from the guests as well that helps make those connections between the team and the guest. Okay. I mean, honestly, this sounds like I'm going to um, camp with dirty dancing. Is it like that? Yeah, there, there is. A, <laughs> well, I, okay. So hand, like hand up. Movie? I've never seen dirty dancing all the way through. Okay. So I've just kind of, I, I can't say a hundred percent, but yes, it, it is. It is very, very similar to that. Like the camaraderie and like the, just everyone knowing each other and, and then mm-hmm. um, being really like immersed into the whole experience of the trip is kind of 1 million like, percent. It is a culture in and of itself, which okay. is you either really like it or it's not your cup of tea. For me, <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Like right okay. from the very, very beginning, I drank the Kool-Aid and bought in <laughs> completely. And it just fit my it fit my personality and it really just kind of fits my vacation style as well. Like I okay. love going back there. I love sandals mm-hmm. too, but I, I love the sort of club med experience. Um, so what was like the highlight of the Indonesia specifically one? Cause that one is the most intriguing to me. I've actually been to Indonesia, but it's been, it was in 1999 and we just went to the Island of Java. So I didn't do any of the small, smaller islands. So now I'm like really captivated by this, this whole idea. Yeah, for sure. So first off was getting there was an absolute bear. You know, I, I came home from Cancun. I was home from Cancun for five days, just kind of washed all my clothes, repacked everything, saw my parents, hung out with some friends, and then jumped on a plane, flew up to JFK, and then over to Abu Dhabi, and then okay. over to Singapore. And so, you know, it was like a 27-hour trip with 22 hours in the air or something like that. And so I get there, I get to my hotel in Singapore. We arrive, we spend two days in Singapore getting all of our visas ready to take the ferry over okay. to uh, Indonesia and Bintan Island, which is like a you 45 a ferry? minute ferry ride. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's 40, 45 minutes. So we take the ferry over and get settled in. And I was late arriving to the resort. I was held in Cancun waiting for my replacement to get there before I could leave. And so I felt like, you know, I really need to, once I get there, work really hard, make up for lost time, you know, be everywhere on resort and really just try to make the most of my time there. And so I get there and I work probably two weeks straight, no day off, just every single day, starting at 7.30 in the morning. And I'd finish up probably around midnight, 1 a.m., and then just sleep for a couple hours, do it again. So what do you think are the biggest differences between Club Med and coming to a Sandals in the Caribbean? Yeah, I mean, I think kind of like we like we spoke about, it's very much a culture thing. You know, Mm -hmm. the the Club Med culture is that of a village, the the rooms are, you know, not the nicest. And they're not not nice, but they're also not it's not like going to a sandals is incredibly basic. Like they didn't put TVs into the rooms until like five, 10 years ago. So, you know, they did not want you in your room. They wanted Mm -hmm. you 
out in the resort. They wanted you playing beach volleyball, playing all the sports, you know, being at the coffee games, all of that kind of stuff. So that's really what it's all about. And then with sandals, obviously it's geared much more to two people in love, to couples, creating a romantic setting for people to connect. Now, if you bring a group of people and you all have, you can all have fun together, but as far as Mm -hmm. organized activities, it's much more heavy in club med as opposed to, to sandals. Mm -hmm. We we're here at sandals Duns river, which is the newest. And I'm going to say in quotes, newest sandals in Jamaica, because it was actually the very first sandals I ever Mm -hmm. went to in like circa 2005. And then they closed. I think they were a different resort for a short hot minute. I mean, it doesn't look like the same hotel. Like I, that doesn't look the same whatsoever. I really like it, but it's funny that it is couples only, but I'm here with a couple of girlfriends, you know, because we're in the travel industry. So there's exceptions in that aspect, you know, here to see the hotel. Everyone thinks we're like a thruple, I think, because <laughs> <laughs> like, what's yeah. happening here? Who are these girls <laughs> that are walking around the hotel? We're like table for three and like everything's in twos. <laughs> They're yeah, like, we don't do uh, that here. <laughs> just a minute. <laughs> yeah. So they, they wheel out a booth but, in the uh, back I, for you guys. <laughs> yeah, they're like, mm. and I was just at Sandals Curacao, which is, I think, technically the newest, you know, new built, new build kind mm-hmm. of. I think they built on just a big chunk of it just a couple weeks ago. And I think Sandals, you know, for a long time, I felt like everything looked like it was in like 1998 like with the mahogany beds and all of that. And you can kind of see a little bit, I'm sitting in my room here at Duns River, all of the decor and everything is so much nicer. But one thing I wanted to also point out, because I think a lot of people listening to this might not even know the whole Sandals story. I always remember because I was born in 1981, but Butch Stewart started Sandals in ni- 1981, where he was like selling air conditioning, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. And then just decided to buy a hotel and it's right next to the airport. It's still the same one in existence, Sandals Montego Bay. That's actually probably my favorite one. Just the nostalgia. I'm a nostalgia person. But when you go there, you always see like the corporate people and stuff are coming, you know, just to have lunch or or whatever. But one thing that I think is really cool, so popular right now is a swim up bar. And that was this, they, he created the very first swim up bar in the Caribbean. And it's actually just like a small company. I think people think of it like they put it in brands with maybe not like Nike, but like almost there. Like when you think of sandals, you just think of like, that's the main one in the Caribbean. And it's actually um, started by a Jamaican family and just a small company. So when they have like IT issues and stuff like that, I'm like, y'all, this is like, they're just good at marketing. It's a small company. <laughs> they're not some big company with this like huge IT department in the US. It's literally a call center in Jamaica or in St. Lucia. It's it's funny that you mentioned that. They they tell you that the very first day. The very they do. first day that you- <laughs> I, just, I just noticed you know, this. <laughs> yeah, they, they say, look, this is a family run business. And it is. Uh-huh. I mean, it's yeah. like you said, Mr. Stewart, uh, he started off, yeah, doing ACs and, and doing HVAC work. And, you know, before that, they loved to tell the story of all of the James Bond movies that they would film in Jamaica. And he was 14 years old or something like that with a boat. And he, his first, first job was shuttling the movie stars back and forth to film sites. They, they talk about his entrepreneurial spirit and how it started at a very uh-huh. young age for him. And how he's just wanted to continue to push the envelope uh, as far Uh as as developing and at the end of the day, shed light and bring uh, bring people to the Caribbean and show the Caribbean that he loves and that he's so proud of. Adam Stewart has done a great job of sort of taking that and bringing it into the future. You worked on resort with Club Med, but the difference, yeah, with Sandals is that you um, you were a business development manager based in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. So what you did was you helped, you know, facilitate, you know, people wanting to sell sandals more and taking us on, you know, trips. We call them fam trips, um, familiarization. It's really just like an education type trip, but they're fun. 
And um, we did uh, one with just our team with Spencer in uh, 2019. Yeah, the, the fam trips were always so much fun. I had a blast on those. And kind of to your point where, where you said you're, you're at Dunn's River now and you're in this weird sort of, you know, it's a couple's resort. It's kind of meant to be romantic and you're there with on a girl's trip um, with some other travel advisors. When the BDMs would all travel together, it was the same thing. There'd be eight of us in the pool or, or nine of us in the pool, young-ish guys all hanging out. And everybody's like, what is going on here? This is kind of strange. <laughs> We're like, no, it's, it's not weird. I promise. We're just here for work. Just people. <laughs> ignore the fact that we're uh, we're all sitting here at the swim up bar, just uh, you know, <laughs> living our life with with uh, rum and cokes. <laughs> we had a very close group of us that all came in together. It was right mm-hmm. around the time that they were trying to expand and put a BDM in every single state. And, oh, I remember that. I remember like, wow, we Oklahoma actually have somebody in Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That was how instead of just having someone from North Texas drive up and spend like a one month out of the year, they'd be be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they wanted to put a BDM in every single state. And so it meant hiring and onboarding a bunch of BDMs. So where do you we train were, exactly? So you do a week in Miami at the Miami okay. office, and then they take you on like a resort trip. So the same way that you would, they would do a fam with travel advisors, they did the same thing with us BDMs. And so we went and spent four days at Turks. We went and spent four days in Jamaica. We did three days in the Bahamas. So we were gone for just this mm-hmm. long period of time, almost, I think it was almost two weeks that where we were just bouncing around between resorts. And then after that, they were like, hey, you have to take this test to prove that you've learned actually what we're doing and you just haven't okay. eaten all the food and drank all the booze and just kind of <laughs> lived it up for basically a month between Miami mm-hmm. and, and on resort. And they drill this into you like it's the hardest test that you're ever going to take. You need to know what flights are coming in from what areas, like the major okay. hubs. You need mm-hmm. to know air, all the airport codes did you have to know the room categories? They're really painful. So we had like, to know like certain key room categories. So they would show us a picture okay. of the round of all such and such with this view plus this and all of that. And they'd show you a picture and you had to write down what it was. What hotel? And like what hotel, but also what room category and, and that kind of thing. And they drilled it into us like, hey, if you don't pass, See you later. Like, See glad you, later. you enjoyed your time here, but it, it's, it's not going to work out. And that's how I actually, when I worked at Southwest Airlines, we went through a whole training thing and there was a test at the end. And if you didn't pass, bye, there's the door. Yeah. But it was also <laughs> awesome. Like that you're, again, you're three weeks and you're getting to know these other, other people. We had an incredible group and we were best friends like that. We go to class in the morning and before before that we would go we'd send in the group chat in like a whatsapp and just be like hey we're meeting at this room everybody bring your champagnes and so we we grab the the champagne from the mini bar and we'd all Uh go over to one room we'd order room service and we would just sit and like drink champagne at seven in the morning before our nine o'clock (laughs) class and so we would just we would go make mimosas we're having drinks having room service just sort of Uh living living it up and we're studying for the day we've got our binders and our books open and and we're reading and this and that and just quizzing each other but it was more of just that that sort of camaraderie that then spilled Mm -hmm. over throughout the rest of the trip so the minute that we finished our training for the day. It's like, okay, Mm -hmm. you've got 15 minutes, run up to your room, go get your board shorts on or, or your bikini, whatever, meet us down at the pool. We're playing volleyball. And then we're, we're going to have fun at the bar before we meet Mm -hmm. up at seven for dinner or whatever. So it was just nonstop, basically partying. 
and all of us passed the test like but it was it was a blast it sounds like almost like basic training but like fancier i mean just like so (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's like it's it's like so hardcore but then when you come out of it so many people talk about like well they used to be a sandals bdm they'll say this they used to be a sandals bdm so they're really good you know like because sandals is like this this like training model that everyone you know would like to be and achieve to but then like there will be people that have like moved on and are working for other companies and they'll still reference well they used to be a sandals bdm so they have been trained very well (laughs) yeah there was a group of us that had what we called the wobbly duck pact which was okay which was you know the wobbly duck is every every sandals resort has the sort of generic english pub that is you know, some random adjective plus an animal kind of thing. And, (laughs) and so there was one night we had all just passed and we'd done this massive presentation where we had to talk about what we had learned, how we were going to take what we learned and, and utilize it in the field and all of this kind of stuff. And we're standing around in the wobbly duck. We're the only people there. And we're kind of reflecting on the last month that we've been training together. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was myself and the BDM from New Jersey. And we were like, dude, are you for real? This is what, look at what we've been doing for, <laughs> for the last month. Like it's uh-huh. an absolute joke. Our Instagrams are filled with, you know, beach pictures and, and, you know, pictures of, margaritas and daiquiri and all of this kind of stuff. And we've just played nothing but beach volleyball for the last month and drank until our eyes floated. Like, <laughs> and, oh yeah, we had some classes in here too. This is not that bad. Like this job yeah. is awesome. And so <laughs> we would reference it quite a bit, which was let's not forget this conversation and this feeling right now because this is how much fun this job can be. So we would call and bitch to each other on the phone, like, oh, you will not believe the conversation I just had. Can you believe that we have to do X amount of sale calls in this amount of time or this blitz, my manager is up my ass, this sucks. And then all of a sudden you're like, Uh oh, that wobbly duck, that wobbly duck pack. (laughs) That wobbly duck. (laughs) This really isn't that bad in the grand scheme of things. So let's just, you know, mentally take ourselves back there and know Uh that eight to 10 weeks out of the year, we're going to be in the Caribbean and we're going Mm -hmm. to be having a good time. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We had um, a great convo and um, I'm excited to expand my club med knowledge and I'm excited to try St. Vincent in May. Of course, with Vincent Vacations. I have to go to St. Vincent at ASAP. It opens here at the end of March. Make sure you are following us here at Vincent Vacations on all social media platforms, specifically on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And that's a wrap for this podcast. And we will see you next time.